Welcome to another edition of Neighborhood Update with State Representative John Prezell. I'm Tracy Toth, and today we're talking about the red light enforcement cameras located along Roosevelt Boulevard. Representative Prezell, in 2004, the Philadelphia Parking Authority was granted the legislative authority to implement what has become known as the red light camera program at, throughout Philadelphia. Can you tell us what the program is and why it's necessary? Well, for several, several years prior to that, uh, 02, 03, 01, uh, the Insurance Institute nationally came up with five intersections in, the, in America that were the worst intersections in the whole country. Red Line in the Boulevard and Grant in the Boulevard were two of the worst in the entire country. So all we were looking for was a mechanism, how do we make these street corners safer for the people that live in the neighborhood? There were several deaths at Grant in the Boulevard, four, in fact, within a two-year period. And our goal was, how do you slow this down? How do we stop this? And uh, we came up with the idea of the red light camera. Uh, they're now implemented at Grant in the Boulevard, Red Line in the Boulevard, Cotman in the Boulevard. I think there's eight locations eight currently. Total. And I'll just give you some statistics. The number of tickets from the first day that we wrote tickets until today at the uh, Grant in the Boulevard is down 93%. At Red Line in the Boulevard, it's down 72%. And at uh, Boulevard and Cotman, which is one of the newer ones, it's down 52%. So there's a drastic drop in the number of tickets that we're giving out in the beginning and just a couple of months into the program. The most radical drop being Grant in the Boulevard, which was really the top worst intersection. Take us through the steps. What, what happened after 2001 when, when you thought, wow, this would be a good idea to use? 2001, uh, we introduced a, a piece of legislation, uh, reintroduced it in 2003 uh, because we were not successful, and had to educate our colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things was, you know, you have to understand what we're dealing with in, on Roosevelt Boulevard. It's unique. So it was convincing them that we had a, we had a problem and we had to do something. It's a it's a 12 mile strip, and when you think about the 12 mile strip, it's residential houses on both sides, along with mm -hmm. the churches, the playgrounds, the ballparks, the shopping centers. It's a, ma a major highway with a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. Now, Representative Taylor, um, the cameras became active in 2005, mm -hmm. right? Um, did you see immediate results? Well. Um, I think we're all surprised by the number of violations that occurred in that first month. The first month, I think there was about 2,600 violations sent out. In the five consecutive months following that, over 3,000 each month. Now, in the four to 500 a month. So people have paid attention. They don't want those violations. They slow down when they see the, the fairly large signs warning them that a camera is a is there, and uh, we think it has made people slow down and s stop on a red light. Surely there was probably an, a slight increase in foot traffic after the implementation of this safety feature, wouldn't you think? Well, you, you have more people not afraid to walk not across the boulevard. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what I like about the cameras, and, and we've talked about it amongst ourselves, is the fact that it's there, it's in operation 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the light has to be turned red before the thing goes on, and people know now to stop. Before they, they thought it was, for the first 90 days you didn't have to pay a ticket. Okay? You were saying so a, a legislative solution that really made sense, Tracy. Right. And, and I think really people important. recognize that it just makes sense. But, Tracy, this is important for everybody to understand. A lot of the times we've been criticized saying that this was a money maker for the parking authority. Every dollar that's collected on the, on the fines above the cost of the cameras, we have to pay the company that runs the cameras, and we have two employers or three employees that are, are meant to, to keep an eye on it. Every dollar goes to PennDOT. So, so far they've received millions of dollars at PennDOT for pedestrian safety in the entire state of Pennsylvania. So the money goes back for safety for our citizens, not for the parking authority to have a revenue generator. This was about safety, about saving lives, about slowing cars down, and about stopping people when the light turns red. Uh, Representative Prezell, let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, I understand that when the red light camera program was first implemented, there were a lot of questions and concerns about an escalation in rear end crashes. That was just a, a red herring in, in my, my mind because, I mean, if the motor vehicle manual says when the light turns red, you stop, you stop. I mean, that's what it says. So all we heard was there were going to be hundreds and hundreds of crashes if the light turned red and people stopped because they get rear ended. Well, that's. That was, a, as I said, a red herring. It didn't occur. The number of accidents at all these inter at the intersections where we have enough data, particularly Red Line and, and the Boulevard and Grant and the Boulevard, the accidents are down. There have been no deaths since the lights went up, and the uh, number of people running those lights is down. Representative Taylor, can you walk me through exactly what happens? Let's say I'm approaching a yellow light, and I 
beat up to get through it and the camera takes a picture of the back of my car. Is well, that how it happens? If you go through a yellow light, you'll still be okay, Tracy. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is when it's red. We all kind of know when we do that. If it's red, uh, what happens is the, 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 um, there's a mechanism in the ground which knows that you went through the light, the photo is taken, and we don't get the complaints about the, the tickets because it's so clear with the photographs and what you get in the mail that you violated this, this uh, red light problem. Uh, it's, 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 it's beyond dispute. So you'll get a citation in the mail it's a non-criminal uh, citation, it's a civil citation, but it's still a $100 fine uh, that needs to be paid. And um, that has, uh, it's overseen by the Philadelphia Police Department and uh, it, it's worked fairly well. So the mechanism can delineate between the yellow light and the red light then? Oh yes, it, it, the, um, the cameras do not start to go off until that light is red. I see. And, and you'd have to, you can go through the intersection at yellow and still wouldn't, do it. They know when you go through the intersection after it is red. And Representative Taylor, what kind of support does the red light traffic camera program have in the House of Representatives and even at the local level here in the city of Philadelphia? I think in the House, Tracy, we have the full support of the Philadelphia delegation and that's a, a bipartisan uh, support. Uh, and I think it's strong enough to get this legislation through uh, the House and get it over in the Senate, we can work on it over there and try to get it passed. It also has the full support of Philadelphia City Council, which is an, in, an indication of a bipartisan support for this concept, and uh, that's important for us. If we can get everybody on board and understand that public safety is, is not a party, it's not uh, for any individual, it's for everybody. Right. right. So we, and even with the speed camp, they want to take the next step also. 17 members of city council have endorsed adding speed, the speed camera enforcement uh, to the program. Uh, so it is bipartisan. Uh, we all live in Philly. We care about uh, the safety of our, uh, those that drive the boulevard and those that uh, cross the boulevard. So You're also hearing from other members of the General Assembly that they're, they're thinking about this for their areas too because they've got problems like we do, not, maybe not to the magnitude of the, of the boulevard, but they have intersections where they have problems with people running the red lights and with people speeding through the red lights. Representative Purcell, can you tell us a little bit about the results you've seen at the intersection of Cotman and the Boulevard? Well, at Cotman and the Boulevard, which is one of the more recent locations for the red light camera, as I said earlier, the, the, the accidents are, the, the number of tickets are down 52 percent. And it's interesting when you take a look at Tyson and the Boulevard, where they do not have the red light cameras, okay, before Cotman and Boulevard was the higher accident section. The Philadelphia Police Department's done a study. And now they can tell you that Tyson and the Boulevard without the red lights has become, has moved ahead of Cotman and the Boulevard. Because people know, and I think John said earlier, there are great big signs. There are, there's cameras ahead. You're going to get a ticket if you go through here. And at Tyson and Boulevard, they don't, the, the lights don't exist and the signs don't exist, and now that's become a higher accident area. And uh, that just, that, I think that's proof that the, that the program works. Uh, Cotman, Cotman and the Boulevard also has another problem where the left hand and right hand turns are more of the people running the light than the straight on north, south, east, or west. And that's part of the, it's a problem with the legislation we're going to look at, which is you, you can only do it for straightforward traffic to give the, the traffic ticket to. And now we need to look at the turns because they, they're a problem too. Mm -hmm. Well, Representatives uh, Taylor, Kenny, and Frizzell, thank you all so much for joining us today. I'm Tracy Toth. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Neighborhood Update with State Representative John Prezell.